guys, welcome to the Flow In Flow Out podcast. My name is Sam Nang. I'm a lifestyle and performance coach, hybrid athlete, and philosopher. And I got a very, very special guest here. And I know I say everybody's very special, but <laughs> this guy's very special to me because he's really helped me a lot in my business and my online remote coaching business. And so I wanted to bring him on here and chat a little bit and have him share his expertise to uh, our community and his community as well too. So what I'm gonna do is I'm, he, he gave me a little nice little bio. I'm gonna I'm gonna pretend I did some research, but I made him do all the work. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But then he's gonna fill in all the, and then we're gonna have a great conversation. So Robert is my digital marketing, organic marketing coach. And uh, I found him through Kingdom Coaching University coaching program and I regularly attend his coaching calls and um, he's very entertaining, keeps us engaged and everything. So Robert is a 20 year, 28 year old entrepreneur that lives in Hamburg, Germany. He is, he's been in the online business game for over eight years now, and he's worked over a ton of different projects. In 2022, he even earned the prestigious two comma club click funnels award for helping a company hit seven figures. Nice. We're definitely going to talk about that. Uh, for the past three years, Robert has worked exclusively with hundreds of coaches across any niche, helping them build and grow in their online businesses. He loves traveling, and he just got back from a three-month backing, backpacking trip in Central America where he hiked active volcanoes in Guatemala, scuba dived with huge manta rays in Costa Rica, and surfed remote waves in Mexico. I remember you were, you were at that location when you were coaching us, like I see yep, you. That's right. <laughs> you, you were yep. trying to find a Wi-Fi. <laughs> okay. Exactly. Yep. He's also super passionate about AI and finding ways to use it for better efficiency and productivity. His prompt stacking strategy has been helping his clients to research, craft, and even launch their online business in less than an hour. Wonderful resume. Welcome to the show, Robert. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, man. Thank you so much. It's exciting to be on here having, you know, hopefully a great chat with you and, you know, talk about business, talk about life, talk about whatever we're going to be talking about. So very much excited about that. And hopefully, you know, we'll be dropping some golden nuggets for the audience as well and see where things are going to take us. Yes, Robert is full of golden nuggets. That's why I wanted to have him on here. And typically how we, uh, uh, before the show, we typically have about like five minute conversation or 10 minute conversation about how it's going to like run down just as uh, you just making sure that we're we're all good. And it's it's funny how like some of the guests, when I start talking to them, they just start saying flow, you know, just flow mm -hmm. with it. And, you know, the, the podcast name is flow in, flow out. It's mainly it. about personal development, uh, entrepreneurship. Uh, some spirit well spirituality a little bit as spirituality and personal development to me is kind of very similar so typically in the beginning of the podcast we talk about like how we got here you know how we got to the mm. entrepreneur space how we uh how robert hurt became this uh iconic ai genius on the internet here <laughs> <laughs> so I tell us a little it, bit man. how you got started <laughs> oh for sure you know as you were mentioning before in the introduction you know my online journey started eight years ago like believe mm -hmm. it or not like you know i'm 28 right so like i started as i was 20 years old yeah and you know even even before that i feel like you know to give you some context as to, like why how, like starting an online business was relevant for me in the first place like i would love to just like take you back to like 2011 <laughs> like even like nine years before ever started starting anything in the online space. And that is when I, you know, like just spent 11 months in the US. So I went to high school over there. I was 15 turning 16. And, mm -hmm. you know, in that year, that that entire year was literally like life changing in like so many different ways. But the biggest kind of like catalyst to really, you know, push me to start an online business was this one experience, like one day before Thanksgiving, I remember it very well, because my host mom that you know the mom that I was living with basically over there and her husband were uh, living in two different cities because you know of work right so we always had like a yeah. two hour drive on like every other weekend and we were kind of like driving <clears throat> back and forth over there and it was one day before thanksgiving we were driving you know back to my host dad basically over there and i still remember it like on one hand i remember it very vividly on the other hand i don't remember it at all because like i was i was reclined i was like you know uh watching a movie on my phone uh, the movie, I, I, I can even still recall the name of the movie. It was Machete or something, right? So I was watching that movie, minding uh, my own business. And then <laughs> suddenly, <laughs> you know, this 
other <laughs> this other car crashed you know right into us basically and you mm. know from that moment on i didn't remember much at all because everything went just like so incredibly quick uh i just blacked out you know got unconscious and when something like that happens to you you kind of like don't remember much but i remember kind of like just like those flickering seconds of like consciousness where i just opened my eyes i could smell some smoke i was feeling intense pain i couldn't get out of the car i have no idea how i got out of the car or who dragged me out of the car um, because it was just my passenger side was just completely demolished basically and i'm very yeah. lucky that i'm still standing here today and you know being able to give interviews and podcasts like that because honestly like a couple inches to either direction would have probably could have potentially ended my life right so Basically, what happened is, you know, I got like a, you know, three inch cut in my colon, I had inner bleedings, bruises everywhere. Luckily, nothing was broken. So uh, somebody was watching over me for sure. Yeah. And then they had to do emergency surgery on me, uh, you know, like right there. And then like, you know, on like, you know, in the hospital. So next day, I woke up. And then I just realized like, this could have been it. You know, like, mm -hmm. this, this could have been my last moment here. And at that moment, I kind of like realized how precious and important my time truly is, right? And like being 16 at that point, like that was a very early realization, you know, like how yeah. important your time is. And kind of like that moment didn't, of course, like let me to like, oh, I want to start an online business, but it has just broadened up like my perspective towards like what else is out there in life, right? Yeah. You know, like, I've never been a big fan of like the traditional way of living as like, you know, go to school, get a degree, you know, like get a job and then work your way up for the path for like the next 40 years until you retire. And then you will have fun. Then you travel, then you do all yeah. the things that you want to do. Like I always was like, let's do it now. Like, why don't we do it now? And then what's, what, what can I do to do all these things now instead of having to wait for the next 40, 45 years, you know? Yeah. So that, that experience by itself kind of like just like broadened up kind of like my perspective and my mindset towards like just like being open to other untraditional ways to basically make a living and to kind of like craft and design my life in that sense, you know? Yeah. And then fast forward basically to 2016. That is, I still remember that day very vividly as well. It was the April 29th, 2016. I remember it very well because at that time, I was uh, delivering pizza, right? So I was delivering pizza for basically living to make some money while I was studying business administrations. And then on that day, I bought my very first online course, which was $1,500. At that time, it was a lot of money for me. I know yeah. as a as a you know twenty year old like just spending fifteen hundred dollars on something that you just don't know what it truly is, and yeah, that's kind of like what got me started in to the whole like online business space. Back in the days, it was like affiliate marketing, meaning like selling other yeah. people's products and then making commission when you like sell something, and then doing that with with email marketing basically. So that was my my whole beginning. Yeah. I mean, that's an incredible story for somebody so young because Robert, Robert's only 30 or 28. I'm actually 38. Yeah. So uh, to come to that realization at such a young age is, uh, you know, it's incredible. And you actually took action towards it. I think sometimes people do have those type of awakening where like it, it, life kind of wakes them up. You know, I got to a point yeah. where I, I, I got to a point where I had to be woken up as well, too. But it was in a different way. I love mm. entrepreneurship. I think you, you've had, you know, anybody that's in the entrepreneur space and the remote coaching has like this, some kind of like purpose or meaning because entrepreneurship's yeah. not, I don't think anybody it's anybody can say it's easy. It's just starting no, everything no. from scratch, you know, learning all the skills and yeah. putting everything together and stuff. And, you know, having that, that moment of like clarity for you when you, you know, had that car accident and everything. And then, you know, I'm pretty sure that that took a, you know, having that moment of like, there's more to life than just going to yeah. the nine and five. I think a little my story I could share for some of my, uh, from our audience, both of our audience is that I've been an entrepreneur for, I just an entrepreneur in spirit, right? But never really mm -hmm. like, I've been gradually taking steps to go full time. So about eight years about so when you started yours, I was working a corporate career uh, in luxury apartments and doing management. But I, I took uh, 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 
kind of like an intrapreneur route where while I was working at uh, these these uh, jobs and these positions and stuff, I, in the back of my mind head, I knew I wanted to do something, <laughs> right? So yeah. I'm learning digital marketing, all right, and using the space and just like mm-hmm. doing more stuff than I need to. I think there's there's something that like, I think uh, there's like two different sides to like entrepreneurship where you could actually build skills and when you make the jump, it's a little bit more comfortable. Of course, it's still not always comfortable. It's still very scary at the same time because there's nothing really to fall back on. Um, but yeah. fairly confident in the space where like I built enough skills where, um, so when I first started, I was working a corporate job and I started doing marketing for, I started selling real estate. I started selling nutrition. Mm-hmm. I started selling, uh, coaching, I, but it wasn't like, uh, like a system. It was just like learning everything and then picking up clients here and there. And I used mm-hmm. it for real estate originally. And the using a lot of organic marketing strategies. I never really paid for ads or anything, but for me, the yeah. type of clients that I get when I get through the outreach to leads and marketing from seeing me, they're just very qualified. They're almost like they know mm-hmm. they want to work with you and everything. So the idea of like you using, um, <clears throat> coming to the marketing and everything, when you, when you first started, because you start, you don't like you're where you're now is not where you started. Like you didn't say, Hey, I wanted yeah. to be an AI guru. So you probably started something and then kind of developed this niche over time. And that's kind of where I'm at right now. And that's where Robert helps me mm-hmm. a lot is kind of like working to who my ideal clientele is. The word is avatar. You yeah. use the word avatar. I never heard of the word avatar before and used in like a digital marketing space, but mm-hmm. he's taught me a lot and I've grown as well too. And maybe to weave back into my story and stuff. So I did the corporate world and everything. And then uh, life hit me. You know, the pandemic hit me. Marriage hit me. Mm. Childhood, uh, like kids hit me. The stress of work hit me. That stress of work hit me. Started giving me mental health issues. Um, Mm. After going through like my separation and divorce, I I had a lot of mental health issues. I was dealing with a lot of anxiety, depression Mm. from that. And it took me forever no i want to say forever but it was a very intense phase of my life where uh i was in sales during the time right and when your mental health issue mental health space is not in the right place it affects a lot especially when you're an entrepreneur yeah uh in sales and it it, now struggling and and it was almost like Mm -hmm. uh about last year where i started to kind of recover from what i was dealing with but after the depression Mm -hmm. i went to therapy and then i did some meta type coaching, neuro-linguistic programming and stuff. So that's why like my brain is a lot better and healthier. And that's part of what I coach is to a lot of like mental health, identity shifting, also including the nutrition and uh, the nutrition and physical training and also the energy management because I just became who I am because of just me personally developing myself and just being a better person. And then my business just kind of like naturally organically grew to this. Uh, I started going more remote coaching the beginning of this year. So the mm-hmm. content that I put out, it seems like, I don't think it's like where people think like I'm an amateur. So I, I, I show that, Hey, look, I have some experience and I do say I have a lot of experience. I started working out at 14 and just been continuously developing over and over. And that's why I'm here, awesome. you know, with the flow in flow out podcast is to sh- share my, some of my stories, uh, share some mm-hmm. of my, uh, uh, community stories, the inspiring stories. And I think like, uh, I love your story and like your lifestyle now. And I kind of develop my lifestyle as well too, where I just love sports, athletic and coaching. And that's pretty much like all I do now since I'm like, um, but yeah, I, I, I love that how you just shared your story in the beginning part of your journey, because that's such an important part, especially when it comes to mm-hmm. personal development and like identifying oh, yeah. who you are. But so you started with a $1,500 course. It's always something that starts right. it. This is kind of like starts it. Yep. What was that? Like a digital marketing, affiliate marketing co- course? Uh, course yeah it was like a it was like a video training uh that had like a software included to it uh which basically helped you you know set up like you know an affiliate marketing funnel so basically Uh multiple pages that lead to other different sales pages and of course with email marketing on like how to redirect traffic to all of that so that's kind of how i got started uh Mm -hmm. which you know at the time I was, I would, I would say like, I was very naive and I was believing a lot of, you know, the marketing and this, yeah. you know, the, the headlines and all of the things that have been 
you know, just like, you know, published. And I feel like that is also something that has massively changed, of course, since like eight years ago. And now is that how marketing is done to a certain degree and, you know, what the audience kind of like believes nowadays, um, because back in the days you could get away with like headlines that just nowadays would everybody would be able to say like that is just not true like you know like yeah, nowadays yeah. people are just way more jaded they've seen way more things um but back in the days i was quite naive as well i was like reading headline i was like yeah that's amazing like you know like the headline that got me probably was like hey who wants to make ten thousand dollars a month and travel around the world and i was like heck yeah i want to do that like you know who doesn't you know i mean still so yeah, that's kind yeah. Of what got me <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's what got me into it. But, you know, truth be told, like eight years later, like, you know, that is to a certain degree, you know, like my lifestyle now, because like, I love to travel, like I've just been like around for three months and having the ability and the freedom to be able to still work remotely online and having those coaching calls when I am like in Costa Rica, when I'm in Mexico, when I'm in Guatemala, you know, like that is incredible. So that's what got me started. But it definitely was not an easy journey, you know, like yeah. to get to where I am today. So you, you, you had a formal education and then you started going into the entrepreneur space. And I know you read a lot of books. I have a lot of books as well, too. And could you talk mm -hmm. about that? How did like the books kind of help evolve you into, uh, cause you started with affiliate marketing, how like that time frame between that and to like AI, you're like AI mm -hmm. guru right now. Of course you're learning more yeah. about AI and stuff and definitely tell us a little bit about, um, what you're working on as well too. How did that go from affiliate marketing and transition? Is that like an eight year process that you had? Yeah. And tell us a little bit about um, like, your education to support yourself. Yeah. So of course, like, you know, like, education wise like the formal education that you're referring to like as i was saying like i was studying in university like business administrations but at that time i was doing it just for the sake of doing something you know like because of course you have sort of like a little bit of the pressure of like your parents wanting you to do good you know wanting you to, to see you kind of like do something with your life basically so yeah. the majority of my time growing up i thought i'm going to become a doctor or i'm going to study medicine because that is kind of like who i was surrounded by you know quite a bit you know like my mm -hmm. grandpa my mom um, you know, doing that. But then at some point I realized like, you know, as it was time to now start to study, I realized that it wasn't really my dream that I was thinking of like getting into, but it was more of like the dream that my family had for me that I yeah. at some point expressed the interest in that. And of course they picked it up and supported me in any way possible, which if you look at it from like, you know, I expressed the first interest of becoming a doctor at like probably six years old because my, you know, grandpa asked me. I responded, I'm going to become a doctor just like you. And then from that moment on, the entire family was like, yeah, Robert's going to become a doctor, you know? So like, that was like the narrative that I kind of like grew up with, you know, until I was 18 and I started to question, is that truly what I want? Yeah. You know? And then that was probably like the first time I actually like had like a, a proper, I wouldn't of course call it like midlife crisis, but it was like a little bit of a identity crisis as to like, you know, I thought that I'm going to do that. And that was like what I was working towards to for like the majority of my life. Now that is not there. So what else am I going to do? Mm -hmm. And in Germany, we usually have the saying, like, if you don't know what you're going to do, just study Betriebswirtschaftslehre, which is BWL, uh, which is basically just general business administrations, because you business will take a look into, you know, like all sorts of different things and parts of like business in general. And that's what I've done. But yeah. I've done it primarily just to do something basically and you know to have my parents you know be okay with me doing that and then while i was in university i think like was the, the first or the second semester that's when i picked up basically that first course that's when i got started in that and yeah. so i was still studying i still got my bachelor's degree um but next to that i was just continuously self-learning about affiliate marketing about mm -hmm. email market about building an online business and to your question you know, around books like definitely books and personal development in general, like definitely have had one of the biggest impacts on me becoming who I am today, you know, because yeah. like one of, one of my favorite quotes is like, you know, success is, you know, something that you attract by the person that you become, right? By yeah. your own. And I feel like that is so true because if, if it weren't to, for me, like reading all these books, watching all these video courses and learning and like, you know, growing and developing myself, my mindset, my skills, you yeah. know, how am I supposed to kind of like be, I would say like the person that is worthy enough of like, you know, attracting money, of attracting, you know, great clients, of like attracting an audience because 
that is now my personality. That's who I am. So yeah. books are just absolutely incredible. And the fact that somebody has spent years of their life to condense their information into just like one book still boggles my mind. It's probably like the best source of knowledge that we have that yeah. people probably underutilize heavily. I agree. It's uh, one of the lowest or like it's the highest ROI. It's like $15, $20 for a book. Yep. But it's somebody that spent their whole lifetime kind of researching and putting yep. it together. And if you told somebody that, like if you would... Uh, like, cause I've had this conversation or somebody put it out. This, it was a great conversation. He was like, mm -hmm. if, if somebody researched everything and everything and put it in this one area or like a, uh, you know, page and gave you, uh, all their life's work and everything and all their wisdom and everything. And people were like, yeah, I would love that. We're like, yeah, mm -hmm. why don't you go read a book? But nobody reads books. <laughs> it's yeah. one of those things. It's like, <laughs> exactly. You know, that is the truth. It's like one of the, the highest, I think, ROI. Yes, it takes time. It takes attention and everything, but it yeah. pays off into you personally and then developing. And then you actually, like I said, like we were talking about like identity shifting, you actually become mm -hmm. your business, right? Yeah. Robert, you're great at your business because uh, your coaching calls are how you teach and how you understand yourself and how you understand how people are going to listen to. So part of that is growing like entrepreneurship at the end of the day, it's like, for me, anytime that I'm doing something, I'm learning something. So I've learned mm -hmm. a lot about AI from you, uh, especially because it's, uh, I knew a little bit about AI and it's starting to come. Um, but when you taught uh, AI to me, it just gave me a whole bunch of level of like creativity. I'm a fairly yeah. creative person, but it just kind of gave me that uh, ability to get creative and more growth opportunities and which just made me super excited because I'm one of those person, like an entrepreneur at the end of the day, they just like, they like to create. And of mm. course the revenue and everything is a great uh, part of it and the lifestyle as well too. Like your lifestyle, you know, you built your lifestyle to what it is and everything. But, uh, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, AI in itself, because it's fairly new, right? Can you tell me a little it bit is, about yeah. how AI started and how you got into it and how you transitioned yeah. from affiliate marketing to AI? Mm -hmm. So like the transition was, you know, I wouldn't say like necessarily slow, but of course, like eight years ago, AI was not even a thing. You know, it's like, yeah. the of course, there was software, which is which is coming like the closest to somewhat AI-ish. But of course, AI like is in artificial intelligence has been around for what, like two years, probably where it like, two years, yeah. honestly, was like, you know, fully openly public to the world, probably a little less than that one and a half to two years, right? That's when ChatGPT kind of like, you know, got started. And that, of course, was just absolutely crazy of like, what was possible with like the first even iterations of what AI was able to provide and do for us. Now, for me, my transition from affiliate marketing to AI, you know, it wasn't I was doing AI, then I, I was doing affiliate marketing, that was doing AI. There's a lot of steps in between. Like I also had a podcast at the time, it was called the Your Best Self Podcast. I was interviewing you know, entrepreneurs as well about how to basically become the best possible version of yourself. So fun fact about that. Um, yeah. I had a YouTube channel where I was doing YouTube videos, personal development videos. I've done a lot of that as well. Um, you know, of course, email marketing. Uh, I had a blog at some point. Um, I was launching my own products at some point as well. Um, I was, you know, partnering with software companies, you know, at some point I've been running challenges and like, I've done a lot of things. And you know, as I was saying, like, I, I've been involved in like so many projects, you know, some of them, some of my own, some where I was supporting. Um, but gradually through that, of course, not all of the project worked out well. You know, like there's always things that, you know, you could improve, that you could do better. Of course, some things work well, some did not at all, right? Where there's been so many moments where I thought like, all right, this is it. You know, now is the time it has come after three years, you know, like working on this, this is going to be my breakthrough moment. And then it didn't, you know? So safe to say that, as you were saying, entrepreneurship is definitely not easy, right? Like there's, there's so many things that go into play in order to basically become a successful entrepreneur and build a successful business. Um, that at that time, I would have like, if I if I were to look back, like, you know, eight years ago, and somebody would have told me that it's going to take you four, maybe even five years to truly find the success that you're looking for, I probably would have said, I'm not going to do it. Because most <laughs> of people don't have the bandwidth or don't have the endurance, I would say, and like that long term thinking of being okay with not seeing results for maybe a couple of years. Because 
honestly, that's what it's going to take some time for some people. Of course, not always. There are some, some exceptional, you know, like situations where people do have some sort of overnight success. But over the most overnight successes have been, you know, in the making for a couple of years because making. before that happens, you know? Yeah, it takes like, I think that it's, it takes like 10 years to make an overnight success. Thank you guys for watching the Flow In, Flow Out podcast. So I want to take a moment and take a break from the show. And thank you for being a part of our community. So I'm the head coach at Peak Performance Academy. And I want to talk about how you guys can support the channel and how we can support you as well, too. So if you enjoy the podcast, please subscribe and share it with your thoughts. Leave a review with some feedback and let us know what you enjoy about the show. Your review helps the algorithm and gets our message out to more people. So here's how we could support you guys and your personal growth. Uh, so we have a coaching community called Peak Performance Academy, where I'm the head coach. We offer live coaching calls and lifestyle packages as well, too. So if you need additional support in these areas of your life, please book a discovery call with us. We look forward to hearing from you and look forward to working with you. And also, if you are a fan of the Flow In, Flow Out podcast and you resonate with the message, and if you have an inspiring story to share, um, anything that you want to get out there that's going to help elevate the collective vibrations, we welcome you. Just let me know. Send me an email. Uh, send me a comment. And then we'll get you scheduled on to the show. So we look forward to having you. And we love and appreciate all the support that have you give, been giving to our um, the Flow and Flow Out podcast and the Peak Performance Academy community. It's like 10 years to make an overnight success. And Basically. it's real. It's I started, real, honestly. I started YouTube and too when I started uh, doing more uh, hustling. Uh, I made vlogs about my training mm -hmm. and everything. So I always look yep. back and I'm like, no, th those are like some fun moments where I could share some of those memories. And some of the people that yeah. I have that has been following me for a long time, they could see their journey. And, um, mm -hmm. and you know, from for me, part of my marketing is just kind of like sharing what I'm going through, you know, mm -hmm. sharing like, hey, here's my growth. Here's my podcast. Yeah. I'm talking to my coach. I'm telling them mm -hmm. uh, that we bring on coaches and stuff so we could coach each other and, and grow with each other and actually learn how to have conversations too, yeah. uh, business conversations. Because like you said, when, when I first started, um, I'm in the fitness, I started in the fitness space and mm -hmm. Instagram. And like you said, those headlines, they just like get you yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And you know, part of my, I guess my niche for myself is to be like real and authentic and mm -hmm. really explain the process of like health and fitness as well too, because especially because of the get quick schemes, you know, in the yeah. business world and entrepreneur spaces like that too, it's like, Click this, you'll get a hundred, uh, yeah. you know, fifty to thirty leads per week, yep. per month, and stuff. Yeah. But it's not actually really like that, you know. And same with like the fitness spaces too. Is like do this, and you'll be able to do this. Yeah. But I think having like what you've ha like had is just like a lot of intuition uh, mm -hmm. that I think was very strong for you, and then building like a strong f foundation of yep. business and entrepreneur. I went to school for business as well too, knowing that I was going to be an entrepreneur, mm -hmm. but I didn't know how or what. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't yeah. know it was going to be the coaching space, but um, you listened to Jim Rome. My mm -hmm. mentor that actually, that I listened to was Tony Robbins, who Jim mm -hmm. Rome was Tony Robbins' mentor. So when I yeah. say, when you talk about Jim Rome and the, the, those guys, I was like, those guys are old school. <laughs> yeah, And they I told are. Tony Robbins, Tony Robbins is old school, but he's he stays relevant. But he's been yeah. in the online or like personal development coaching space. And I think like um, sometimes it's just like listening to people that you resonate with. I know mm -hmm. there's people that resonate with me, and I know they're you know they're listening and they follow me and they cheer me on. And and the stories are starting to inspire them to start taking a little bit more action and stuff. But you know you yeah. took immediate 
action. You were like, here's the wake up call. Um, yeah. But my wake up call happened after like this year because I thought I was going to be a life coach after mm-hmm. my corporate career, but all that had kind of just like uh, got shoveled around and stuff. And I was like, you know what? I think this is the the moment to do it, to mm-hmm. go full remote coaching and everything. And, you know, I bring a lot of skills, but I also still need coaching and learning how to do it as well, too. But what I, I think where I, I do want to ex- uh, chat about is that you have a very simple funnel, simple type of marketing now where you just have a f- your your Facebook and then a, a landing page or is it a funnel? Mm-hmm. Is that what you have? Yeah. And then talk about that because our Corey and Tuan, um, our coaches or my coaches, they talk about how simplicity scales Mm -hmm. and I love it. I like simple as well too, and try to keep it clean as possible, but I have a few things going on, but I also want to make it clean and simple as well too. So uh, you have your Facebook, let me pull up your, what I could do is I could pull up some of your, 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 your content here. For sure. Should I pull up your landing page? Yeah, you can do that as well. You know, that's of course like the newest thing that I'm, you know, currently working on. Um, you know, which is my, you know, coaching business accelerator bundle, right? Because you are one of our clients, of course, and I've shared like all my AI training with you, kind of like, you know, backing up to what your question was before, you know, as in like, you know, how AI has developed by itself, like one and a half years ago, AI came out, JGBD came out. And since then, I basically asked myself, okay, how not only can I utilize that for, you know, like my business, for, you know, my copy, for my branding, for everything that I do, but also, of course, looking into, okay, how can I utilize that for our clients? How can I make things easier? How can I make things faster? How can I make things, you know, uh, less less effortful and like more efficient, basically? So that was kind of like my goal. I was looking into what are we teaching in our coaching program and how can I turn this and have ChatGPT do the hard work for us, right? So that's basically like the quest that I went on um, because of course, before ChatGPT was even the thing, like all the things that, you know, like a coach, an aspiring coach, or even established coach had to do, you know, it was really, okay, discover your customer avatar. Who is that? Who do you want to work with? What are the problems? What are the pain points? What are the goals, dreams, and aspirations, All right? So that's kind of number one. Then of course, you have to put together some sort of offer that could help these, you know, this avatar to solve these problems and solve these pain points. So you had to come up with all of that. You had to put it together, you know, nicely into an outline. You had to put together bonuses. You had to come up with a name, come up with the pricing, come up with the descriptions. And all of these things you had to do manually by yourself. Yeah. Can you imagine that? Yeah. Before ChatGPT was even a thing, this is what our clients had to do manually. I was doing Chat that before I met around. you. <laughs> yeah, exactly. This took a you lot. Know, like, a and lot most of, of our clients have done it. it Exactly. You know, and now it's literally done just like that in a matter of like, you know, 30 ish minutes, um, you know, which is what's this, what you see on the screen now, you know, the coaching business accelerated bundle is basically my most popular, my most successful, you know, like prompt stacks, right? because this is something, of course, that we can talk about as well. And like how to utilize ChatGPT to its best of its ability, basically. But I've put together everything that I've been teaching our clients over the past couple of months. And by now, even like the ye- past year, when it comes to how to use ChatGPT to, you know, put together your coaching business, basically grow and launch it and do it just so much faster than what you would mm-hmm. do it, you know, than how you would do it like manually. Right. And this is basically how this was born um, because I've been, you know, like cop, not, not, not copy and pasting, but I was like, you know, trial and erroring my way to come up with the best prompts and be- the best strategies. And once again, over the past couple of months, I've been sharing it with all of our kind of like mastermind clients um, that you are part of as well, of course. And yeah. now it is finally out into the public, right? I'll be launching it, you know, probably next week or the week after that. So, you know, like depending on when this podcast will be coming out, you know, probably will be launched by now. Uh, so if you want to check it out, of course, the link will probably be somewhere yeah. below the video, below the podcast. You let me know. I'll, yeah. I'll release it early for you, okay? Because uh, <laughs> uh, special, special person. <laughs> that but sounds yeah, great. It, that it's sounds beautiful. Great. So did you make yeah, this through you click, so click funnels? Uh, or, no, this uh, is through Go High Level. This is through Go, Go High, High Level. Level. Okay. Yep. Excellent, excellent. Yep. So I, I saw this. This is like 
this is your offer uh, is very strong. That's kind of like where where Robert has helped me a lot is using. I could tell you a little bit how I use AI uh, outside of just regular uh, putting the courses and learning how my ideal avatar is. So when I first started with Robert, I was putting. I didn't have an offer. I don't really have a big offer. I was just more coaching like one on ones and uh, maybe selling like three coaching sessions and you know, just verbal commitments and stuff. So it wasn't really anything like official. So we started working together and developing an ideal avatar. And that's the word It's just like an ideal clientele where you're actually marketing towards to a specific person. And Mm -hmm. uh, Robert's clients are other coaches that are entrepreneurs building their spaces as well, too. Just like he said, is to to make more efficiency. And my ideal avatar will be professionals, entrepreneurs, uh, people that are looking to like level up their f- mental, physical uh, well-being so they could crush it at work and everything. Like here's a testimonial of me right there. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Wearing the same shirt. <laughs> but <laughs> so learning how to find the ideal avatar saves a lot of time. And Robert went through that with uh, me on a coaching s- session, which really did help me a lot. Cause I would have been going back and forth, but I'm still kind of like fine tuning the avatar and putting my offer together too. So that's, uh, that's something that's great as well too. And I'm building out a Facebook group to support my community and my coaching as well too. So, uh, we've done a lot. I've done a lot <laughs> and, uh, chat GPT has helped a lot as well too mm-hmm. in organizing, brainstorming, just kind of being my assistant. Uh, because, uh, like you and me, Robert, I think we're both solopreneurs. We're like we're the we run the company and you know do everything yep. ourselves. But I think being a solopreneur, or somebody that's like looking to build a side hustle, this is a skill that I think is definitely worth uh, learning. Uh, mm-hmm. Having a coach like you, Robert, as like uh, is fantastic. So you're definitely a value to the online space uh, community as well, too. So I appreciate and then. It. Some other stuff that I use it for is this podcasting. To be honest, yep. like I said, like I didn't know how to podcast. I did some vlogs and YouTubes and stuff. I watched podcasts, so I had an idea. But putting together outlines, researching uh, topics, right? Those could be very helpful. And another mm-hmm. thing that you helped me with was learning to put. Uh, coaching programs or not coaching programs, but like individualized uh, workouts and lifestyle packages. And so that's kind of like how I use it as well too. So definitely a lot of capabilities and I'm still learning it as well too. So I -hmm. think we're both kind of sharing and growing. Um, But so that's your stack or that's your offer and everything. But I do actually, I want to know how you and Corey and Tuan got linked up because mm-hmm. that's kind of like a story where like you're partnering with uh Corey and Tuan and then you got the uh, the prestigious is it that a click funnels yep. award yeah talk it, about that I'm not, yeah I'm not I'm not too familiar I know click funnels and I'm starting to read Russell Bronson's book mm-hmm. uh Philly, like you teach Alex Hormozzi's uh strategy I know you have Russell Bronson's uh strategy yep. as well too can we yep. maybe chat about like how funnels and how you got involved with Corey and Tuan. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, that is definitely a story by itself. You know, as you were mentioning, yeah. like I definitely have been, you know, a solopreneur for the majority of my journey. Right. And um, I liked being a solopreneur. Definitely. I still do because of course you have the majority of the freedom and decision-making and all of that. But at the same time, you have all of the responsibility and all of the decision-making and you're by yourself. And at some mm-hmm. point like, I realized that, that, you know, like, one of the downsides of like, you know, building an online business is that it can get quite lonely, right? Because like I live in Hamburg, yeah. Germany, most of my clients are in the US, right? So majority of the people that I you know, have conversations with are overseas, right? So um, at some point, it can definitely get quite lonely. And I was like, okay, like, you know, it will be quite nice to like partner up with somebody and just like, you know, see how we can collaborate. Yeah. And it was... 2020 so COVID already hits you know and then in September September 2020 I believe is uh, where I made quite a big you know jump and decision and partnered up with a software company that was able to automate some of the lead generation we can definitely talk about that in a second as well 
Um, mm -hmm. But that is where kind of like I was looking for an automation tool that because we were doing and still are doing, you know, organic Facebook marketing, which means that you're not paying for ads. You're using our personal profile to you know, reach out to people, have conversations, build relationships, create content and grow our audience this way. At the time that I was starting and doing all these things, I realized that it is quite time and energy consuming. And I was like, OK. If I want to reach out to 20, 30, 40, 50 people a day, you know, of course I can do it manually, but it will take me like a couple of hours to do that. And it will take me a lot of mental energy to do that as well. So mm -hmm. I was actively searching for a tool that can help me alleviate a lot of that work and alleviate a lot of that stress and decision making as well. Right? Because each decision, decision you have to make, you know, of course, takes away from your mental energy. So whatever decision you can basically delegate or outsource in some sort of way, perfect to do that. So. I was searching for a tool just like that. And at that time, uh, Tuan was the first person basically that I kind of like got in contact with because he was promoting a tool just like that. We were both in the affiliate marketing space and, you know, he was doing some stories. He was doing some posts around that tool and I was just checking it out. I had no clue who Tuan is. Like I'd never connected with him before. And then at some point he did a Facebook story where he was selling that tool at a lifetime special back, back in the days, as it kind of like first got launched, it was like 197 for the entire, you know, for, for life basically, which by now it obviously is not available any longer in any way, <laughs> shape or form like that. But I saw that and I was like, okay, you know, I'm going to think about, it. I'm going to like, you know, take a look at it. Um, and then they had like a 24 hour special. So, and then I was like, because of the time zone difference, I went to bed, I wake up, I woke up in the morning, I clicked on the link again, and it was gone because it was the 24 hour special. So I was kind of like hoping that he wouldn't be true to his word of like, you know, 24 hours and then it's gone, but he was right. So he was um, you know, like, he had a 24 hour special after that, he took it down. Next week after that, he did another promotion for a lifetime special, but this time it wasn't 197, it was 297. So I was like, ah. Dang it. If I would have made a quicker decision, I could have saved on a hundred dollars. So at that time, at that time I was like, okay, um, I need the software because like it, it looks and it feels like it is everything that I want right now in a software. So I connected with him. I was like, Hey, you know, can you give me a little demo of that? Um, you know, it looks exciting. And then he did. And then he was like, by the way, like you can also become a reseller and a partner for that software. So I was like, wait a second. So you're telling me that not only I can use the software, but I can also resell the software. And at that point, at that moment, like that was like a definitely like a breakthrough year breakthrough moment, because I had this epiphany that, you know, at that time, there was literally kind of like a gold rush situation, like, you know, a lot of affiliates, a lot of people where of course, like looking for leads, looking for other buyers, looking to connect with other people on Facebook. And they were basically digging for gold, right? Mm -hmm. And back then in the gold rush, who were the people making a whole lot of money? Not only the people digging for gold, but also the people that were selling the shovels to the people digging for gold. So that was basically that situation where I realized, you know what? Like, this is basically exactly that. I could be selling the shovels to the people digging for gold. So I could be selling the software to all the people that are already looking to connect and grow the audiences. So basically I was like, okay, let's connect. Uh, let's see what's up. And I, you know, partnered up with that company and then everything went, went, went quite quickly, right? Like Tuan, like he's always a very much an action taker, right? Like, you know, yeah. we connected and then, you know, suddenly he called me a couple of times a day, basically was like, Hey Robert, let's put something together. Let's just make a black Friday special offer. It's coming up. And, you know, I was, at first I was hesitant because I'm a perfectionist, you know, by heart and I want things to do good <laughs> and be and looking right. Uh, so yeah, I was Tuan like, like that. We're just like, do it. Let's do it. Yeah, <laughs> That's yeah, how this exactly. podcast started. And, <laughs> and that is, that is, that, that is definitely the much better approach because, you know, then within like a day or two, we've just put together a quick little presentation. We came up with a strategy of just saying, you know what, let's just do a Facebook live, you know, to both of our audiences. Let's just share the tool. Let's just share an offer. And then we did, right? And within like a day, we just put together this Facebook Live, put together this offer. And then I think we were selling that software for like four ninety seven something, you know, for basically for life. And we got like six or seven or eight buyers. So it was like one day of planning turned into four thousand dollars being made, you know, right there and then. And we were like, ah, oh, that worked extremely well. 
you know, and it was a lot of fun doing that together. Uh, so let's just do more of what we've done already, you know, and yeah. then throughout 2021, we basically just like came together regularly. We have, you know, ran different challenges, right? For, you know, three days, we had the messenger mastery challenge. Uh, then, you know, like we had like different, like three day challenges, five day challenges. I think we had like seven or eight throughout 2021, where we not only have been selling, uh, you know, the software itself, um, but also we were able to bundle like, you know, resell licenses with some training and some coaching as well on how they themselves could become resellers too. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of like what has gotten us together. And, you know, really 2021 was definitely a great year uh, where, you know, I've learned the power of, you know, like having a team or having a partner that you can always bounce ideas off of, that you can, you know, like always trust that, you know, when things might not work out that he'll pick you up, you know, that will he'll, that, will he, that he will like, you know, uh, support you and like, you know, uplift you and inspire you in some way. And that was like, you know, on both ends as well. That's kind of like yeah. how we have met. And then that has led to me meeting Corey, right? Because at that time, Corey and Tuan had their own kind of like, you know, business going on as well. Um, you know, back then it was not called the Kingdom Coach University. We had like Premier Excel, right? Which is basically yep. the main company um, that they were doing. It was also a coaching company, you know, helping, you know, aspiring and established coaches build, launch and grow uh, their online business. And then it basically happened that he was like, hey, Robert, I would love to introduce you to Corey. You know, he's my other business partner and, you know, we are working on this thing. And, you know, we may think that you might be a great fit to, you know, coach our clients because you're doing organic marketing you have a great coaching style you do you know very simple training that people you know can understand easily so why not you just you know do the coaching <laughs> once a week for our clients right yeah and yeah that's kind of like how how we got connected all three like Cortuan and i and that's kind of like how we started working together yeah fantastic I can share you my story with uh, Corey yeah. and Tuan. They're great guys. I mean, by the way, like that's the reason why I think we're uh, a lot of people that work with them is their personality first, right? I think it's yeah. same with you. You see a friendly face, and I think you talked about it. It's like Facebook love faces, and I tell yeah. people, say, yeah, that's why podcasting <laughs> exactly. works. That's why yep. uh, Facebook works and everything. So putting your face out there more. And I started seeing Corey and Tuan, and I started seeing some of the videos, started seeing their content and everything, and it started, you know, it resonated. They, uh, mm -hmm. so I booked the call and, and typically I, 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 cause I was still building my business. I think it was like, I think uh, I'm three months into the program about the same time. And I was like, man, I'm feeling like I'm not getting anywhere. And that was yeah. kind of like where I was like, Corey and Tuan, their message resonated because they were faith based coaches where, you know, I think, uh, it was very interesting because they started to incorporate some of their faith into work which i was starting to get more into like spiritual work as well too because of like the spiritual healing so that was kind of what resonated and i jumped on a call with Corey, and i'm an action taker too i was like i know i yeah. was one bias. <laughs> I, don't, I just i just didn't know what the price is <laughs> and i yeah yep. the, the price of coaching and then to be honest like it's 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 worth it of the mm -hmm. amount of time people have to understand like when you get coaching what you're saving on is it's not money you're giving up money to save yeah time efficiency and stuff so what i'm saying is like the three months that i spent with Corey and tuan has helped me save time i think it probably would have taken me at least like three years to figure mm. this out a lot of frustration probably yeah. try to like but i'm an entrepreneur so i know how like it's important that like time time is most urgency uh even in life you know it's just like yeah. be urgent and try to really attack like what you want. That's always kind of been my mindset uh, because I'm like an athlete. I'm like want to get mm -hmm. it so uh tuan uh being vietnamese uh he was like my southeast asian brother and then <laughs> Corey. so Corey, when we were doing like our strategy call together and he started pulling up some of my assets kind of like how i pull up yours mm -hmm. and what gave me a lot of confidence in working with them Corey is the the surprising like uh the quote that i always remember he was like Yo, this dude's got game <laughs> <laughs> yeah i was like all right come on let's go <laughs> so we were I mean. talking about building six figures uh 
you know, starting talking about money and stuff. And of mm-hmm. course, like having the, the Kingdom Coaching University Network as well, too, was mm-hmm. part of what uh, I love it because everybody's very similar mindset and like, hey, like, faith-based coaches like we're not just coaches and we have a mission a purpose behind like what we're doing and selling as well too and part of like what i'm offering is you know it's it, it you know personal development people get views like spirituality i think it evolves into some kind of mission if you do enough mm-hmm. purpose or enough entrepreneur enough space where like hey you want to contribute and give back to who you know what you learn because I've always been one of those person that's been a been a service. Anytime I learn something, yeah. I would always coach it. I started yeah. coaching uh, when I was wrestling. Started doing CrossFit. Started bodybuilding. I was mm. always giving back, no matter what it was. If I was getting paid or not, yeah. I was just giving it for free. You know, I think this this podcast mm-hmm. is free information. It's business information that is hyper relevant. Hyper relevant, yeah. as in like it'll be relevant in the future as well too. But that's our story with Corey and Antoine. I'm going to have to get them on here when I start. Uh, um, I think the community will love it. But for like AI and like the future and how you're staying with like uh, on top of the cutting edge information and everything, how do you do that? Are you just tinkering trial and error or uh, are you seeking other like-minded individuals to learn from? Oh, of course. I feel like, you know, there's so many great minds, uh, you know, that like utilize AI in like different ways. And of course, ChatGPT is just one of the AI tools out there that can, you know, alleviate so much of the work that you have. Um, It, of course, depends on like what you want to do and try to do. And, you know, like there's different AI tools for different purposes. You know, if you're an artist in some sort of way and you want to create images, Midjourney, for example, is absolutely incredible, you know, to create AI generated images. But for me, ChatGPT was always kind of like, you know, the the number one tool that I wanted to use simply because of the way that I could help our clients use it as well, right? Because I do feel like, you know, like learning AI and learning ChatGPT or any other, you know, tool out there, right? Because by now there's Claude, there's MetaAI, there's, you know, Google Bar, there's all these other tools out there. But learning how to use them efficiently and understand kind of like what they're capable of, I feel like in today's world is one of the most powerful skills that you can learn, especially if you're building a coaching business or any sort of like no marketing related kind of like, you know, business, right? Because ChatGPT by far is by, is my best employee, right? It is Mm -hmm. close to free because it's like, you know, the, 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 the premium version is like what, $23 a month. And even the free version can do so much. You know, that's, you don't even need to have the paid version if you don't, you know, want to basically, right? But learning how to do all these things, of course, requires some sort of input. Either you trial and error your way to the right prompts and to whatever you're trying to do. Or, of course, you follow other people and you, you know, buy other courses and other trainings that can help you learn that. So as I was going back to the question, as I was kind of like getting started with AI, of course, like, I had inspiration. I had, you know, input from other people, other courses, other people that I've been following, YouTube videos that I've been watching, right? And learning what are they doing? How how are they doing things? And then I would, you know, one of the gifts that I have is just like take information from different bits and pieces of different people and apply that to what is relevant and important for me and our clients. Because as the client success director for, you know, like the... Co- uh, King Coach University, of course, like clients come first in my mind. And I always think about, right, how can I make it easier to understand? How can I, you know, share it in the simplest form possible? How can I make it so, you know, like, almost like dumb proof that people can literally copy and paste, you know, the majority of the things. And this is kind of like where I wouldn't, you know, like coin the term, like, you no know, prompt stacking, but for me, kind of like, I wouldn't necessarily say that I came up with it because most likely there's other people that have been like, you know, doing that. But I thought about, okay, if ChatGPT, you know, is capable of doing all these things, like what's the best way to use it? And for me, I realized, okay, like instead of just saying, hey, come up with, you know, a Facebook post about X, Y, and Z, you know, which is what primarily a lot of people are, you know, kind of trying to use it this way for, like to create content and different things and just doing these one-off prompts. For me, it just like never really made sense because like in order for it to do well, it needs to have enough information and context about who do you try to reach? Like who is that avatar? And that's why 
the entire avatar conversation comes first in each and every one of our clients. That's why the first call that we had was an avatar audit call. Is who do you want to reach? Because everything else just will only fall under, you know, in, into place if you are clear about that avatar. And yeah. same thing will apply to ChatGPT as well. For it to do well, it needs to have enough information about your avatar in order to come up with the best output possible. So that's where basically the prompt stacking comes in, where instead of saying, hey, create a Facebook post about X, Y, and Z, mm -hmm. you know, I would first teach it about my avatar. And I would do it in a strategic way where, you know, like I would need to just input one prompt where I have to share some input about who I want to be working with. And if people mm -hmm. don't know that, then I have developed, you know, like other, you know, uh, GPTs basically to help them discover that avatar, right? Just by answering basically two questions. That is also, by the way, part of my coaching business accelerator bundle. But then once you type in this one main prompt, the beauty of prompt stacking comes through because now you can literally just copy and paste the prompt that I have already developed and it will stack, right? You will, you are basically yeah. stacking them and ChatGPT <clears throat> will be able to reference what it came up with before. And that's what I call kind of like collecting raw data, right? You start yes. with a general idea, you start broad, and then you go narrower down, narrow down, you teach it, you share with it the context, you ask it the right questions for it to learn the context of who you want to be working with, understand the raw data of like the problems, the pain points, the fears, the goals, the limiting beliefs, all of these things. Now yeah. it just knows about your avatar. It knows about these problems, these pain points. And now you can create more specific outputs. Now I can put together coaching program outlines. Now I can come up with names. Now I can come up with an I help statement that, you know, like is a clear and concise marketing message. Now I can come up with bonuses. Now I can come up with content ideas that are so much more relevant and related to your avatar. Right? Yeah. But knowing that, of course, that took me a lot of time to figure out this prompt stack. In what order should I be asking the questions? What sort of questions should I be asking? How should I be asking them? And that is, of course, knowledge that either you have to buy from somebody or you have to discover for yourself by yeah. doing a lot of trial processes, you know? Man, you dropped a lot of nuggets on that one. But I think one yeah. takeaway that I could definitely like resonate from is just simplifying it. I, I coach yeah. a lot of people and sometimes they'll overcoach. Like, correct this, yeah. correct this, correct this, <laughs> uh -huh. <laughs> change this, change this. But it's like really trying to check, take the biggest thing, the biggest problem and like fixing it and stuff. And like yeah. when you said like having the ideal avatar, let's maybe go deeper into the, the ideal avatar because that's a big, like if you get the ideal avatar and you're mm -hmm. talking and saying your message to the right person, your marketing is already selling it. I think something that I learned from like Corey and Tuan is that like marketing is it marketing comes first where like you actually mm -hmm. developed offer and sell that product. And then once they get the offer, it's a, for me, it's like, it makes sense because every time I bought something or like a coaching program, it's like, I'm already consuming the material and already mm -hmm. understanding it. But when I take that leak, everything kind of just clicks. So it's the same with the kingdom coaching universe. I've seen the content, uh, yep. even like some of the metamorphic, uh, coaching programs that have, I was kind of already watching it, watching it. And then when I went to go purchase it, of course it's an investment, right? The yeah. investment doesn't come up front, but it the benefits uh, are later. And in a way, like I'm very similar where you like I love art, I love philosophy, where like I could blend a lot of things and just kind of simplify it and make it. Mm -hmm. uh, and I could uh, when I coach is I pay attention to who I'm coaching and like if yeah. they're actually grasping it, because I've, mm -hmm. I've coached old people to kids, yeah. you know, like mm -hmm. how can you simplify it? Right. If you could coach a kid, a simple concept, uh, you don't understand it. Yeah. So I, I, I love that what you just shared, uh, lots of like wisdom. And I think with like AI, I use it as like, uh, like a brainstorming partner, yeah. you know, an assistant. That's perfect. I'm using so many. Yeah. Just like when I'm just like, and I think one, one point I do, I think what the prompt stacking is, uh, you know, that book seven habits are highly effective yeah. people, right? Mm -hmm. right? I think that there's a saying in there, you know, have the end in mind. And, yeah. and in sight. So mm -hmm. having like prompt stacking is like, think of who you are, want to uh, target towards. Mm -hmm. And then one thing that I was kind of like struggling with, we were working with like probably go niching into fathers and everything. And I am a father. Mm -hmm. And I'm also an entrepreneur, fitness enthusiast and everything. But I think 
I started to develop a uh, avatar that's like a younger version of me. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, if that's the same, like, because w- when you're selling to yourself, like you were an entrepreneur five years ago, you're trying yeah. to solve that problem for them. How do you make this more efficient? And it's the same with me. It's like, how, like, how do I help people that are fathers or professionals be more efficient and have a better life, be energetic mm-hmm. and stuff. So I'm t- talking almost to like my younger, like my five-year yeah. younger version of myself. And I developed that by talking to one of my friends. I was like, yeah, it's like I'm talking to myself, exactly. like an avatar. But I don't know and how is, you got any thoughts on that. The- No, I think like that is usually the best thing to do is like, you know, look, uh, when you think of an avatar is like, think through basically yourself before a major transformation, right? Like look back into your life and like, you know, see, okay, what has happened over the past two, five, 10 years that I have overcome in some type of way, like what major transformation have I had? And then you can ask yourself, all right, like, do you feel like during that time, having a coach or having you know, somebody that can, that, that, that can help you transition, you know, like whatever that is that you've gone through would have been helpful to have somebody like that. Then the question is like, okay, yeah, it probably would be right. And that is usually the first kind of like, not prompt, but like the first thought I give people is like, okay, let's look back five years ago, two years ago, 10 years ago, like who have you been? What have you gone through that you can now share and teach other people on how you've done it? So they can do it faster, easier, or with less effort, right? So yeah. I love that. And that's that's usually how I kind of like, you know, start doing things as well. It's like thinking, yeah. okay, what have I solved for myself that can help other people solve too? Yeah, I think, I think that's kind of like the natural progression of coaching is like, you see the progress and then you mm-hmm. want to share the progress. And actually, when you share the progress and you teach other people, you actually become a better coach in yep. the process. But you can see what people, what information people are resonating with. And I yeah. think a lot of it is it's storytelling, you know, podcasting oh, yeah. for me. Um, it's uh, I've been doing a lot of research and I thoroughly enjoy it. Right. Just yeah. having like a uh, chat GBT kind of helped me with like building out forms for people to fill mm-hmm. out like the form that you ha- yeah. you filled out before the show was chat gbt a lot of it mm-hmm. was just kind of put together with just because with thinking and putting stuff it's a lot of brain power and oh, that yeah. the decision and stuff that could exhaust you so mm-hmm. that has kind of helped me in the that mental side and that's kind of like where i coach and i've always been big about like the mental side the psychology about yeah. like hey a lot of the stuff like entrepreneur and stuff, it's really being smart and thinking about where you can be efficient, where you yeah. can save some time on certain um, space. And I definitely like chat GBT. I'm not sure how like the, I, I use it for like art and video as well too. Mm-hmm. But I think right now I'm so heavily involved in entrepreneur space right now and, and, and podcasting. So that's kind of like where I'm kind of taking it into that direction. And, I, mm-hmm. and, and I'm really like enjoying the learning process and everything. Yeah. But I, and it's I better think... to kind of like focus, uh, you know, on like this one lane, what you use it for, because like the, I wouldn't say like the downside, but like the tricky thing about AI is, is that it is a very fast moving world. And, you know, there is new updates, new things, new tools, new platforms coming out almost like probably every day, you know, if you were to look very closely, but like, it's very easy to kind of like, follow the rabbit hole and like get lost in what else is out there. Right. Yeah. Because like, I, I, I'm, I'm the same, you know, as you like, you know, I love to do research. I love to test out things. I love to just like try out things. But then when it comes to asking like, all right, is this relevant right now towards what I should be doing? Right. Most of the time the answer is like, not really. Right. Like, yeah. and like coming up with AI songs, that sounds awesome. Let's just try that. But how is that going to be relevant to building a coaching business? You know? So yeah. that's what I'm saying. Like, it's very easy to kind of like follow the rabbit hole and just like get lost in what else is out there and what else is possible. While it's super interesting and super entertaining from time to time as well, like you do have to like direct your attention towards like, okay, let's yeah. see what I need to do and how I can use AI to do that. Oh, here's a good question. Uh, and I get this a lot, like, especially being in the health and fitness industry mm-hmm. and everything. It's like, what are, what are the big misconceptions that you hear when people, because I feel a sense that people are very afraid of AI. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's changing. And I'm sure there's going to be a lot of change. When there's a lot of change, there's, there tends to be a lot of like fear around yeah. it. 
being entrepreneurs, like we, we have to embrace this type of change mm -hmm. because that's kind of like our mindset. But like, of course, there's people out there that have a different like frame of AI, how things are changing with uh, uh, maybe Facebook. Facebook. Mm -hmm. So Facebook went from Facebook to Meta. Yeah. And I didn't right. realize that until I started coaching. And I actually changed yeah. my. I didn't realize that Facebook had a professional setting <laughs> mm -hmm. until I started yeah. coaching. And I was like, oh, okay. Yeah. But yeah, talk a little bit. And then um, we could wrap up the show. And then uh, just uh, we could say what uh, what else is on our mind. And yeah. Then, wrap up the show because i think we've got a lot of good golden nuggets to share with our communities for sure <laughs> for sure no but like you know regarding ai of course like you know first of all i would say for me it's easy to understand new tech new technology you know like ai stuff yeah. as well because like that's what i grew up with right so for me it is natural to kind of like grow up with all these things and it's easy for me to adapt to these changes but I fully understand and agree that sometimes, you know, I would carefully say the older generation has a tougher time adapting yeah. to that major shift that AI is bringing, right? Because now you can have conversations, full-blown conversations with AI that sound like a human person, right? That by itself can be extremely scary, right? At some it point, scary. it will get to a point where humans will be so isolated because the AI will understand them so much better than a human person can. Because the, the AI will not argue with you un uh, unless you want it to. The AI person, you know, will always, you know, say what you want to hear if you want to, right? So mm -hmm. there's so many different use cases that on one hand, I feel like, you know, can absolutely enhance somebody's life in many different ways, not just in coaching and business and marketing, but in general, like, you know, People that are absolutely feeling lonely because they have nobody to talk to. Having an AI, you know, personality to just have conversations with is already something that is helping a lot of people just not feel that lonely anymore, right? Yeah. But of course, there's major downsides to that as well. It's like people will be more isolated because AI understands them better than ever before, right? Like even even in partnerships, like. I can see that happening as well, where suddenly, you know, like one of the two partners starts to have, you know, some sort of connection to the AI because the AI understands them, right? So mm -hmm. now, you know, emotionally, they're going to be more involved sharing with the AI what's going on with them than with their partner, right? Yeah. Also, for example, like a very dark side of AI is like, you know, all the stuff with like, you know, deep fakes and like, you know, things like that, where not only voices can be cloned easily nowadays, like you just need a couple seconds of your voice and it can be cloned just like that. But also sharing videos, suddenly your face can be cloned. Your, your yeah. face can be put onto images that is not you and it looks so real. Nobody will ever be able to tell that it's fake. So I feel like that side of things is extremely scary, right? If we take a look into like the bigger picture, as in like elections or, you know, like false social media stuff, right? Where now suddenly videos come out, pictures come out where it looks so real, it sounds so real, but it's not. Yeah. And that side of things is definitely quite scary in my opinion. Um, not sure how that is gonna be handled, to be honest, right? Because internet and AI is moving so extremely fast that um yeah that is definitely yeah. one of the things that i'm looking I, I wouldn't necessarily say i'm looking forward to see how that's going to pan out but i'm definitely going to keep an eye out on that and that's why yeah by the way that's why whenever i'm asking chat gpt to do something i'm always being very polite i'm always asking can you do it please <laughs> and say thank you because you never know at some point, let's not hope for that. But at some point, maybe there's going to be AI robots in our houses it's gonna be, doing uh, stuff for us. It's going to be Skynet, you know? like Terminator. Yep. Exactly. I mean, I think so, that's the fear where it becomes yeah. itself. I think they talked yeah. about it, about like mm -hmm. AI becoming conscious and everything. And I understand that theory. I think I was yeah. listening to uh, uh, Billy Carson. He was talking about how consciousness is created through AI and everything. I was like, yeah. it's very interesting because things are starting to evolve. But I think I think it's a good conversation to have to be like, yes, yeah. there's a side of AI. There's a side to everything, mm -hmm. like entrepreneur yeah, space. Like, that's true. When coaching online, remote coaching started blowing up, it's like, yeah, you know, when you first start, there's a lot of scammers out there, you know, in the oh, fitness yeah. industry. Uh, I've I've seen it, you know, yeah. scammers. There's but influencers that use like uh, Photoshop. It's always mm -hmm. gonna be there. 
But for me, I think the the real the real thing that I think is gonna last the test of time is just like authentic interaction, yeah. authenticity. Mm-hmm. Um, a funny story, my uh, the original co-host of this. Uh, I had two, two, it was me and another gentleman named Danny uh, Mirowinski. He's, he was a digital marketing expert. And what he was saying was organic, authentic marketing is what's going to resonate with a lot of people. Yeah. As things start to become AI generated, you start to see mm-hmm. scammers. I think for, for us as entrepreneurs or like brands, we yeah. have to stay authentic to us as a person yeah. and stuff. And I think like the message of our podcast is to help elevate the collective vibrations to help everyone yeah. right if this podcast helps you get some idea of hey maybe ai is something that i should look into and mm-hmm. um you know work or you know in my case like I, I i dealt with a lot of like mental health issues maybe there's some mm-hmm. mental limitations identity shifting that i might need to do to actually like fully become who i need to be you know like the charismatic leader entrepreneur mm-hmm. and stuff the one that doesn't care that becomes unapologetic and stuff so that's kind of like my brand is like hey you know when you go into this entrepreneur space you do have to become you you have to become this yeah. uh authentic version of yourself and how you became yeah. authentic and like learning how to develop this and not be scared of what's going on but actually choose to educate people which you know i think it's a it's a great uh, great mission. And that's what I choose to do. And I always chose to do that as well, too. So that's part of like my, when they say like my mission, right, is to help yeah. elevate the collective vibrations. But that's awesome. I love w- it. Wonderful, wonderful conversation. Um, ha- let's, uh, let's wrap this up. Please say something inspiring. Tell anybody that, like, uh, what you're planning to do if you want to put anything out in the air that you want to happen uh and then also uh, and you know leave us with any last uh uh comments or anything for for our audience here to inspire them to take oh, some for action. sure for <laughs> sure so so yeah i feel like you know take some action is like a good um you know message in it by itself right because like looking back once again you know like what happened to me like you know so many years ago with a car accident, like made me realize the importance of time and the importance of utilizing time to the best of your ability. And because of that, like, I'm not sure if I can show you, but let me, let me see if I can try to show you one sec. Let me see if I can move my Mm -hmm. camera. There you go. Right. So you see like there, there is a poster here and it says my life in weeks. And you can see a bunch of like blocks and like the boxes. Some of them are filled out. Some of them are not. Each of those boxes represents one week of my life, right? And looking at it, every week I'm filling in one of those boxes. So, and it's laid out for 88 years and each box is one week, right? At least I visually can see. (laughs) Um, No, I'm living longer, but like they had a version of like 88 and 100. And I kind of like chose like the 88 one. I'm definitely going to be living longer than 88, but 88 seems to be like I'm planning to live past past 100. That's awesome. I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you on that. But basically yeah. seeing that, of course, makes me understand that, hey, time flies, whether you take action or not, right? And um, it will fly. It will fly. It will, it will pass. And sometimes people don't understand that until it is too late or until something so horribly wrong happens to them, like it happened to me, you know? And that is, I feel like, something that a lot of people should not wait for is don't wait for that rock bottom moment before changing something before taking action before you know like doing what you want to do like do it now do it afraid do it in spite of fear and you can always shift you can always work on something you know like along the way and one of the things like especially if you're thinking about like you know entrepreneurial like you know business creation or something like that one of the things that i always you know seen uh like in some reels and stuff like that is like what if things don't work out right, then, well, the worst case scenario is that I'm going to be having a nine to five, right? And like, thinking of that, that my worst case scenario is what other people do every single day. And that's normal life. You know, that's kind of like a, you know, a thought that I can live with, meaning that I'm just going to do what I want to do. And in the worst case, I'm going to get a nine to five. And that's what everybody does. And it's okay. Like, I'm not condemning, I'm not saying a nine to five is horrible. For some people, that's all they want, all they need. For me, it just like never was what I wanted to do and have for my life. Um, but thinking about that, this is the worst case. I'm cool with that. Yeah, 
No, I mean, it's a great message and I appreciate you saying that as well too. I think at the end of each podcast or each uh, coaching session, I think action is really what uh, gets you to do something, you know, kind of reaffirm yeah. things. For for me, if I'm ever struggling or anything, I just start doing stuff. I just start posting, yeah. start saying something, start being, producing something. And the thing is like, I, I don't feel 100%. Nobody's going to feel 100% yeah. at it every day and everything. Yeah. So it's, it's at the end of the day, I don't think it's a destination that we're seeking. Like we're yeah. just on a journey of always improving our skills. Entrepreneurship is really about the original title of this podcast was called Figure <laughs> the F Out. No, it was called yeah, at yeah. FIFO. And then I told him, I was like, I don't think we should say F because it's going to limit some of our... Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we changed uh -huh. it to flow and flow out. But the <laughs> philosophy was, let's yeah. just figure it out. You know, we yeah, figured out yeah. the I figured out the podcasting thing. He has his own mm -hmm. podcast as well, too. And uh, just doing it and figuring it out on the way is has been always kind of my philosophy. And I think we align yeah. on that. I think even with like yeah. AI in the future and stuff, we'll what's going to happen is yeah it's scary everything is scary when change comes uh yeah. that's kind of like life change is never easy. you know any anytime mm -hmm. we have a transition like me i'm transitioning into full remote coaching and stuff that's mm -hmm. that's a struggle and i myself uh and i'm more committed to talking more about like yes we have successes but the successes they're probably about like 10 percent. the 90 percent of it it's in like the work the podcasting, yeah. the editing, the yeah. prompt stacking, and like going to the <laughs> gym, and like doing and yeah. doing that stuff daily habits and everything too. Yeah. So for for me and my message and like our audience and stuff, it's like building daily habits that you do over and over. As boring as it seems, mm -hmm. it's just like I could see your office like it's super simple, it's super plain. Same of mine, it's super simple, simple yep. plain. So I'm not having to make crazy decision besides my my business my entrepreneur space yeah. takes up all my decision making and then everything else i'm just like okay <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah that's life exactly but i think we yeah. had a great conversation i'd definitely love to have you back Absolutely. on uh if i can inspire sure. you to start your your podcast as well too because i think <laughs> you said you uh any you also have a book that you think you say you i remember anyone i remember i paid attention because i'm thinking about writing a book when when this all blows up and stuff mm -hmm. but <laughs> but uh um, yeah, yeah, how about, yeah tell us a little bit about your book and like what you what you foresee the future you know because that's that's a big part I mean, of how i coach is like you got to figure out what you're going for <laughs> yeah i mean so like you know i don't have a book yet uh you know like one of my life yeah. goals is to write a book and write a best-selling book um of course like i had some thoughts around like you know what would it be around um but at this point i haven't like finalized anything you know to it yet the idea um, is there so, though yeah i, I like the, the thought like the plant has been seeded you know for sure uh the, the seed has been planted um you know for sure that you know it will be there at some point um i wouldn't say that i'm there yet that you know i i'll probably you know would have enough great things to share that is book worthy and a bestseller you know like worthy but i feel like i still have more to grow for me to become the person that you know is worthy and capable of having a best-selling author type of title right so like i'm yeah. not there yet right like so like yeah. from, from my mentality here so there's still things that i am of course like working on you know um you know like one is the is the new launch of my offer here um so i would say like by the time i turn 40 i'm 28 right now so i'm giving myself 12 years i'll definitely be having a best-selling author book yeah you definitely have a lot of wisdom for a young man. <laughs> and Thank then, you. I uh, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Yeah. I definitely have you on the podcast back to help promote it. But yeah, having like the podcast and having people to share ideas and thoughts and as well, too. For me, it's like yeah. I have a vision uh, of a book as well, too. Uh, and it, it'll be in like the personal development field, probably more into the spiritual mm. side, because I, f I feel that's what is needed a little bit in the, the entrepreneur space where we can incorporate who we are into yeah. our work, into our life and not have to be this, this fake avatar <laughs> when yeah. you go to work yeah. and then come back to work or mm. your life and be, had to be a different person, be the same person in real life, be the same person in uh business too. So yeah. yes. Um, but wonderful. Thank you for being on uh, the Flow In, Flow Out podcast. Just a Thank reminder for anybody me. that's 
that that's just listening and that's probably a new audience is I drop the videos once a week on Mondays at 6 a.m. and they'll be put in the queue but I do share smaller clips to so people could get an idea of um, uh, how the conversation goes and what I do is on my Facebook because I, I, I learned this from you is to not share YouTube links on Facebook mm -hmm. because it takes about a Facebook but so yeah. I started posting just like video clips like three to four minutes and stuff. So people mm -hmm. actually could stop. And then Facebook actually plays it when you embed it in there too. So that was Correct. just a strategy that I developed with uh, the marketing so people so I could get more people listening or even watching and stuff. That's too. awesome. Yeah. But yes, wonderful conversation. And if you need to say, if you want to say anything before we head out or uh, to the audience. It's been a pleasure. Be it. It's been a pleasure to be here. Um, you know, and hopefully, you know, you got some some wisdom, some gold nuggets, some some value, you know, from today's conversation. It's always fun, you know, to just like see where the flow takes us and like you know what we're gonna be talking about. Because I feel like these natural conversations, they are just so much easier to kind of like get deeper into stuff in. And, you know, yeah. So that's why I'm just hoping that, you know, the audience got something from it. Of course, like if you are curious about ChatGPT and like how I use it and how like prompt stacking could potentially help you, if you might be an aspiring coach or, you know, any sort of like entrepreneurial spirited minded person that wants to go into business like that for sure can help you with that as well so you know something is probably going to leave the link somewhere you know below this video yeah. or on this page or whatever, wherever it will be you know check it out you know take a look at it if you feel like that might be of value to you get it if not no worries at all yeah it's like no worries you know like we'll no continue worries. exactly we'll keep we'll keep doing what we're doing and then exactly. uh when the, when the message resonates and you're ready to to hop on board and work with uh coaches and stuff that's how how it works when you're ready that's when the big shift happens you know when exactly. uh you're ready to be like ah, i need to accelerate my 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 career or my personal fitness and everything so wonderful thank you for having uh thank you for coming on and being a thank guest and we'll definitely have you back on to the to the episode Absolutely. best of luck sounds great with everything and if you need me uh anything just let me know okay thank you so much